no, no God, God, no, no peace. peace, no, no God, God, no, no peace. peace. Food for Soul and Goa co-working present today's readings and reflection. November 28th, 2022, Monday of the first week of Advent. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On that day, the branch of the Lord will be luster and glory, and the fruit of the earth will be honor and splendor for the survivors of Israel. He who remains in Zion, and he who is left in Jerusalem, will be called holy, everyone marked down for life in Jerusalem. When the Lord washes away the filth of the daughters of Zion and purges Jerusalem's blood from her midst with a blast of searing judgment, then will the Lord create over the whole site of Mount Zion and over her place of assembly a smoking cloud by day and a light of flaming fire by night. For over all, the Lord's glory will be shelter and protection, shade from the parching heat of day Refuge and cover from storm and rain. The word of the Lord. The psalm response, Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoiced because they said to me, We will go up to the house of the Lord, and now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem, Built as a city with compact unity, to it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. According to the decree for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord, in it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you prosper. May peace be within your walls, prosperity in your buildings. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Because of my relatives and friends, I will say, Peace be within you. Because of the house of the Lord, our God, I will pray for your good. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. Come and save us, Lord our God, let your face shine upon us, that we may be saved. Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion approached him and appealed to him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, suffering dreadfully. He said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion said in reply, Lord, I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man subject to authority, with soldiers subject to me. And I say to one, Go, and he goes, and to another, Come here, and he comes, and to my slave, Do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed, and said to those following him, Amen, I say to you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. I say to you, many will come from the east and the west and will recline with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the banquet in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Reflection on Today's Readings by Bob the readings today give us another glimpse of the reign of God to come. Isaiah sees what Jerusalem will be like in the future. It is also a prefigurement of the reign of heaven. 
The psalm is one of the pilgrimage psalms said by those on their way to Jerusalem to be in God's dwelling place. It, too, should be the prayer of those awaiting the final coming of the reign of God. In the Gospel, Jesus speaks about the reign of heaven telling his disciples it may be a bit different than what some expect. Isaiah's words about the future rule by God in Jerusalem were words which the chosen people had longed to hear. The remnant in Jerusalem will be blessed as God destroys all evil, and the presence of God will be obvious. It is symbolic of what the reign of God will be after the Lord Jesus comes back at the second coming, Advent, the, in the psalm response, we sense that for faithful Jews it was a special blessing to be able to make a pilgrimage to the house of the Lord, the temple in Jerusalem. As they approached the holy city of God's dwelling place, they would rejoice. Even though the believers were aware of God being with them everywhere, coming to the temple was a unique and holy time of praising God in God's special place of presence. Jerusalem was experienced as its name implied, a place of peace. This psalm also is seen by Christians as symbolizing the joy of entering into the eternal dwelling place of God in heaven. In the Gospel, Jesus encounters a heathen, pagan, non-Jew, army officer who asks him for a special favor, the healing of his servant. Jesus is willing to come into a non-Jewish home in order to bring salus, healing, wholeness, salvation. It was unheard of for a faithful Jew to enter into a Gentile's home, because Jews were considered better than the faithless pagans. The centurion professes his unworthiness to have Jesus enter his home and asks that Jesus just speak words of salus. Jesus praises the faith of this Gentile and informs his disciples that many such heathens will find a place of honor in the reign of God because of their faith, something hard to accept by supposedly faithful Jews, as we continue our Advent journey, awaiting the final coming of the Lord Jesus, we should be filled with joyful anticipation of the Lord Jesus' return and his taking us to the presence of his Abba Father, who happens to be God. As the Jewish pilgrims anxiously journeyed to God's presence in which they experienced peace. So we too should continue our pilgrimage as we await the Lord Jesus coming to take us into the fullness of the reign of God. A few of years ago in the fall, I audited a class at Azusa Pacific University. The class was entitled Terrorism, War, and Peace. During the class, and again today, I was thinking about yesterday's passage from Isaiah which is quoted on the United Nations building, they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. One nation shall not raise the sword against another, nor shall they train for war again. As we face the continuation of the war against terrorism and have soldiers fighting and dying throughout the world, and we hear of terrorists bombing civilian areas such as hotels, restaurants, theaters, schools, buses, and trains, and as we see people demonstrating against the war on terrorism, police brutality, and political leadership in our country. I wonder how faithful we are to God's wishes to work for peace and to continue to work for the reign of God. I realize that Jesus said that there would be wars and insurrections before his final coming, but are we seeking to bring about his final coming by waging war? Or should we be seeking to establish a place where God's peace has already begun and thus show we are ready for the Lord Jesus coming? Sometimes the establishment of peace takes a great deal of work and effort, as we turn weapons of war into useful means of producing food. Sometimes it takes a policing force to make it safe to establish areas of food production and to create food and other necessities of life, I am not condoning the evil deeds of terrorists. 
Evil doers must be confronted and made to pay for their injustices. That, too, is part of establishing God's reign. The question to be asked is, are we doing the right and loving things to help establish true peace and justice in the world? I know there are scriptural passages which can be used on both sides of the issue of war and conflict. I am just trying to raise our consciousness of what it means to be a follower of the Lord Jesus as we await his coming again. It is true that they will not experience or be in the fullness of peace until the Lord Jesus comes again and establishes the reign of God forever. Yet, we are called to be a part of God's reign right now. We should be doing all we can to prepare for the coming of the Lord Jesus. We need to realize that we are on the pilgrimage to the house of our God. Being led by the Lord Jesus. We must do whatever is necessary to help others also travel along the path to arrive at the dwelling place of God. As I read the last verses of the Gospel, I am reminded that many of us may be shocked when we enter the fullness of God's reign and see who else is reclining at the table of the Lord Jesus. Some people whom we thought were our enemies here on earth may be there along with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am not referring to people who are terrorists and who purposely inflict death and injury on innocent people, but people whom we might label heathen like the centurion in the gospel. What does this lead me to do? Firstly, I must realize that I am on a pilgrimage. The place through which I am journeying now is not my final destination. I must not become too attached to what is here right now. Secondly, I must be ready for when the Lord Jesus returns, whether that it is at the end of my personal life, or at the end of time. I must live a life of joyful anticipation of the Lord Jesus leading me along the final paths to the dwelling place of God. Thirdly, I must be active in bringing about the reign of God by working for peace and justice in the world today. I must help raise my personal consciousness and that of others. I personally must see what I can do to turn weapons of war into instruments of peace and justice and rid the world of evil. I must work for the righting of wrongs, but in a just way, not a vindictive way. That is no easy task. Yet if I really believe that the Lord Jesus is coming, Adventus, I must be proactive. And finally, I must say with the last verse of today's responsorial psalm, because of the house of the Lord, our God, I will pray for your good. The personal question or action for today. What is my understanding of the reign of God? Do I see it only as futuristic dream? Am I working for the realization of the reign of God right now? What can I do to help others focus on the still coming, but already present, reign of God? Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of love and mercy. Because of your goodness, you desire that we be with you in the reign of heaven. Yet. You have placed us here on earth at this moment in time, to journey back to you and make a difference as we make our pilgrimage to your presence. You ask us to work for the establishment of your reign by following the example of your Son, Jesus. He worked for peace and justice, which at times included challenging those who were leading others astray. We have sometime failed to accept your invitation to journey along with your Son. We have chosen to focus only on the pleasures we experience en route, and not on the end of our pursuit. We have refused to get involved in activities which promote your reign, because it would cost us too much individually or collectively. You continue to call us to prepare the way for the final coming of your Son. It is He who is our guide and our way, 
and it is he who proclaimed your reign in words and actions. In his name we lift up this prayer of praise and honor for he has won the ultimate victory over evil and death by his own death and resurrection, and he now is living and reigning with you and the Holy Spirit, our one and only God, forever and ever. Amen. Presented by Father Frankie Fernandez OFM Capuchin Justice Peace Integrity Creation JPIC Capuchin Goa